Okay, so, so today I'm going to take a diversion. Um, last time we talked about numerical phenomena and dispersion effects, etc. This slide should have this these slides should have been before that other slide, but um, you know you're not going to get confused because we, we covered them in, in reverse order. But um, we are headed. If you, if you look through the course, we kind of started from the end at the Navier-Stokes equations, and then we looked at um, we started with advection diffusion, and diffusion is kind of reasonably understood phenomena, phenomenon. And then we we solved the Navier-Stokes equations. Then we went to elliptic equations, talked about iterative solvers and um, how we can solve elliptic equations. But there's one type of equation that we haven't really dealt with, and that's the advection equation or hyperbolic equations, what are known as hyperbolic equations. And you will see that it is actually the hyperbolic component of of all of these equations that is going to give rise to these oscillations that we see, the dispersion that we see. Do you remember, dispersion it comes from advection, right? It's an advective phenomenon. And so um, we are going to focus uh, in the next few lectures on solving hyperbolic uh, equations with um, you know, all sorts of flux limiters, et cetera. But before we get there, I want to talk to you about um, the method of characteristics. I'm calling this the, these slides the th theory of PDEs, but I just kind of want to um, um, uh, take over what you learned in your PDE classes and attack it from a more physical perspective. And um, um, uh, so you all know the classification of PDEs, right? This B squared minus 4AC, if it's positive, you get um, a hyperbolic equation. If it's equal to zero, you get a parabolic equation. And if it's less than zero, you get an elliptic equation, right? You, you're familiar with that when you write a general PDE. And who doesn't know this? The standard classification of PDEs, right? You have A d2u by dx squared plus B d2u by dx dy plus C, right? You've seen all that. But do you know why that is the case? Why we, we why this leads to a hyperbolic equation or a parabolic equation or elliptic equation? Okay, so today we're gonna understand why. From from a from an intuitive from one perspective, and that's more intuitive to um, the physical understanding. So examples of PDEs, you're very familiar with these um, advection equation, which is a hyperbolic equation, a diffusion equation we dealt with, a wave equation and a Poisson equation. Um, that's um, an elliptic equation. Okay, wave equation is also um, um, hyperbolic, and we're gonna show that the wave equation results in two advection equations, okay? So this and uh, this is also called the one-way wave equation. Okay, the wave equation is gonna result in, result in waves propagating in both, in, in two directions. The advection equation will result in waves propagating in one direction or another. And we are pretty familiar th with the fact that the Navier-Stokes equations, they have, they're not really hyperbolic, parabolic, or elliptic equations. They have all three phenomena involved. And under, cert, under different conditions, you'll recover um, um, in a hyperbolic equation or a parabolic equation. But in general, they are um, a combined hyperbolic parabolic system of equations along with an elliptic constraint um, for, um, for the mass conservation. Okay. Um, in terms of classification, the order of the PDE is typically determined by the highest derivative. So we say this PDE is second order or third order or first order. You just look at the highest derivative in the PDE. Now, what's a linear PDE? All of these PDEs are linear because the coefficients that multiply the derivatives do not have terms that contain the independent variable, uh, the dependent variable u, or its derivatives. So an equation like this, although it has y squared, that's still a linear equation. Okay. Because the coefficients do not contain u, if we had a u squared here, then that becomes a nonlinear equation. Okay, um, but if the coefficients are just function of the functions of the independent variable, this should be a t over here. Anyway, so these are linear equations. Okay, so what say has have you, has anyone heard of quasi-linear equations? So quasi-linear equations they're actually nonlinear, except that the Coef the, uh, the coefficients of the highest derivatives can only contain terms that contain lower derivatives. Okay? So for example, take this guy. The highest derivative is second derivative here. 
the coefficient of the second derivative can only contain lower derivatives, okay? But for lower derivatives like du dy, you can have a square. It is a nonlinear equation, but it's classified as quasi-linear. In advanced TDE theory, um, this has certain implications, but this is just a classification, um, okay? And we will, we will be dealing, for the rest remainder of these lectures, we will be dealing with first order quasi-linear equations of the form a du dt plus b du dx, okay? So an, a classic example is the Burgers equation, which is du dt plus u du dx. So it's like an advection equation, except that the advecting velocity is a function of the dependent variable. And by the way, please don't write this guy's name as Burger apostrophe s. His last name is not Burger. His last name is Burgers. Okay, so this is the Burgers' equation. Okay, so it's it's Burgers apostrophe and Johannes Martinus Burgers. He was actually he came after the original Burgers equation is was developed by Bateman in 1915. Anyway, that's a side note because I've seen many people write Burger apostrophe s and it just angers me. This is a person's name. Okay, you, uh, give give the person. Enough, enough respect to kind of put their, write their name correctly. Okay, same for Navier Stokes or, you know, and Prantl and whatever. Okay, now the one, one technique for solving PDEs is called the method of characteristics. Who's done the method of characteristics? Who knows what it is? You for, you for, you've heard? You've heard of it, have you? You, you don't know how, how it works. Okay, vaguely remember, okay. So in a nutshell, the method of characteristics, and I'm gonna start from the end. The method of characteristics says, take a 2D um, problem in T and X, for example, okay? So in time and, um, and space. The method of characteristics says, are there curves or lines or curves in the xt plane on which, so you take any one of those curves, on which the PDE is an ODE. That's the idea of the method of characteristics. Can we find lines in the xt plane on which the PDE becomes an ODE? Why do we want to do that? Because ODEs are easier to solve. So then we just take, we just solve the ODE on each one of those lines and the total solution is going to give us the general solution of the PDE. That's the essence of the method of characteristics, okay? So we're gonna start with um, a, a simple advection equation to illustrate um, kind of how we're gonna do this. And the physical, um, the physical interpretation of the method of characteristics takes us back to the material derivative, okay? So at a given time t, imagine that the solution of this equation, u x t, looks like this, okay? So we're plotting um, u versus x at a given time interval, okay? Now, I'm gonna ask myself, what happens if an observer is going over the x-axis and measuring the value of u, okay? And that observer is moving at, at a rate x of t. So it could, the observer could be moving forward, backward, or oscillating. It doesn't matter, okay? Because we're gonna take that into consideration. That's the same exact problem we did with the material derivative. So from the observer's perspective, what is what does the observer see? We remember this from the material derivative. So the observer is gonna, if as the observer is moving, they're gonna see a value for you, just kinda come up and then come down and then right change in time. And we know that rate of change is from the observer's perspective du by dt from the observer, remember the observer only sees time, change in time, that's gonna be equal to local change in time with respect to the outside, okay, plus du dx times dx dt, which is the rate at which, the speed at which the observer is moving. We derived this in the first few lectures. You, sh you, should, you should know this by heart, okay? Okay, so now what can we do with this? Well. This equation, from the observer's perspective, looks awfully like the governing equation, right? So that leads you to the idea that, okay, well, these terms are equal. These terms are equal. 
This guy is 0, right, to u by dt. This is c, and this gives me a relation between x and t. So remember, we are looking for curves in the xt plane on which the PDE is an ODE. And what's an equation in the xt plane is given by dx by dt, right? That's an equation for, for curves in the xt plane. So what do we do now? We compare both equations. And then if you compare the two, you get dx by dt equals c, OK? And then on dx by dt equals c, we know that du by dt equals 0, right? Because to make these equations equal, I need to set dx by dt equal to c. And then when I set it to c, du by dt becomes 0. Isn't this cool? This is saying on lines that are governed by dx by dt equals c in the xt plane, this governing equation simplifies to on ODE du by dt equals 0. OK? Clear so far? OK, so what does this mean? It means that along the lines dx by dt, or the curves in general, dx by dt equals c, u is a constant. OK, so if you pick a line that is the solution of dx by dt equals c, u is going to be a constant. So if you go at the xt plane, you've all seen this graph, and it used to confuse the hell out of you. I'm going to explain it to you now so it doesn't confuse you. You've probably seen these slides. You say, oh, these are the characteristics. This is, this is nothing more than the lines on which the PDE becomes an ODE. Okay? So I'm plotting, rather than plotting t ver x versus t, I'm going to plot t versus x. Okay? And then the slope is 1 over c, right? For dt by dx is 1 over c, right? So this, these are lines on which du by dt equal to 0. So if you start from a point x0 with a value for the, um, for the dependent variable u given by u at x0, okay, then as you evolve on this line, du by dt is 0. So essentially, this is just retains the same value. u is constant along this line and that line and that line. So we're going to use this now to find the total solution from um, a, an external observer. Okay, so the method of characteristics looks for curves in the plane in which, on which the PDE becomes an ODE. Okay, so how do we solve this? Again, dx by dt is c and du by dt is 0 along dx by dt equals c. So dx by dt equals c, we integrate that. That gives us x equals ct plus x0. x0 is an initial condition. It's a point. Whatever you pick that point doesn't matter. We're going to get rid of x0, okay? And that implies that x0 is x minus ct. Okay, so and on any one of those curves, x minus ct, x0 is constant, in other words. Okay, so now we take the other equation. du by dt is equal to 0. So that means that u is simply u at x0, the initial condition, right? Now remember, the initial condition is a function of x, right? Because this is the total derivative, but u is a function of x and t. Okay, so the initial condition is simply given by u at x0, or the point where we started from, okay? And, or in other words, this should be u0, really, okay? But what is x0? It's x minus ct. So you put it in here, and that gives you the solution of the advection equation. So the way you interpret this is like this. If this is, so this is the um, tx plane, okay? And on, on top of it, I'm plotting the initial condition, okay? At any point, you're going to have a value of ux0, okay? u0 at any one of those points. What this is saying is that each one of those points is just going to move along the characteristic, is going to stay the same. And that's advection. OK? And as you change the speed c, you are changing the slope. You know, how far you're going to move along the xt plane. That's it. That's advection. Isn't this brilliant? This is so cool. So again, you're taking the initial condition. At every point, x0, you have a value for u, and you just move that. You just move it. Advection. OK, that's pretty cool. All right, so let's take this up a notch. Let's do advection with decay. And I'll explain why this type of decay is not a diffusion decay, but it's a different kind of decay. 
So I'm going to add a source term. Okay, I'm going to add a source term to the right-hand side of the advection equation given by minus a u, and a is a positive constant, okay? Um, and the initial condition is given by u zero x, all right? Okay, so let's apply the method of characteristics. We're going to define du by dt, the total derivative. It's du partial u by partial t plus du dx dx dt. And, you know, the way, the way you get this is simple. Um, u is a function of x and t, right? And what you do, you just say du, the total derivative, is partial u partial t dt plus partial u partial x dx. And then, but we are looking for something that looks like dx by dt, so we just divide by dt. We get du by dt is equal du by dt, partial u by partial t plus partial u by partial x dx by dt. This is what we're looking for, a relation between the two independent variables, okay? Okay. So we compare now with the original equation, with the governing equation. What do we get? dx by dt is still c, correct? We're comparing this guy with that guy. And to make this one equal to that one, I need to set dx by dt equals c, and I need to set du by dt equal to minus au, okay? So if, if I didn't set these equal, this doesn't necessarily equal to that one because this may be given by an observer who's moving at a different speed, okay? But if the observer moves at the same speed, then these equations will be equivalent, will be equal, okay? Okay? So then, to make the other, the, the total derivative equal to the governing equation, du by dt is minus au along dx by dt equals c. So always put that in mind. So now you see where the decay is going to come from. Okay, so what do we do next? dx by dt is equal to c, so that gives us x equals ct plus x0, or x0 is x minus ct. But then du by dt is minus au, that gives us u is a constant, e to the minus a t. And that constant has to do with the initial condition. So at t equals 0, u at 0 is equal to k, but it's equal to u 0 at x 0. But what is x 0 is x minus c t, right? So then the total solution is u 0 at x minus c t e to the minus a t. Bam. That's how you solve a PD. Isn't this cool? Okay, so let's take it up one notch. Yes. U0 is an initial condition, any initial condition. But it's a function of x, right? Because now, yes, it's a function of x0, which is a function of xt, right? So at any point x0, that x0 is, can be expressed as, x, as a function of x and t. I mean, I can, we can carry all the terms x, x0, xc, it gets really annoying. Just kind of try to keep in mind that your initial condition is actually a function of x and t, okay? Uh, a, a function of x, but then x0 is a function of t, so that kind of allows you to derive things. Okay, so far we've dealt with a constant speed. Okay, let's take it up one notch. I'm going to get rid of the right-hand side term, and I'm going to change the advecting velocity to x. So now the advecting speed is equal to x. So what happens? dx by dt is now equal to x, okay? And du by dt, oops, this is equal to zero actually. du by dt is equal to zero along dt by, dx by dt equal x, okay? So d, this is a typo here. du by dt is equal to zero, okay? So let's integrate. dx by dt equal x gives us x equal x zero e to the t. So now the characteristics look pretty interesting, okay? They're exponential. So if you plot the characteristics in the xt plane, so, in, or the tx plane, this is what they look like. So in the xt plane, they look like exponentials. In the tx, they look like logarithmic functions, okay? This is pretty cool, right? So in other words, if you take an initial condition, and I'll make a plot, you can, you can make a plot, just take like a Gaussian, for example. It's gonna have, just gonna, it's just gonna flow out like this, right? Because along those lines, 
we know that dx by dt is x and du by dt is zero. So you're just taking the value and it's constant, okay? And it's gonna move, the same values is gonna move along these characteristics, okay? So it's, you can rip a function apart. So then the total solution is du by dt equals zero. So therefore, u is just equal to the initial condition at x zero, but x zero is x e to the minus t, and that's how you get your total solution for this equation. Okay, let's take it up one more notch. Now this one we're not gonna be able to solve explicitly, okay? And that's the Burger's equation, Burger's equation, okay? Not Burger apostrophe s, Burger's, the equation of Burger's, okay? Um, it's du dt plus u du dx. Now what's interesting here is that dx by dt equal to u, in other words, the propagation speed depends on the value of the function, okay? So if the speed at cer certain points are gonna have a higher speed than other points because of the function, of the function value, okay? So the characteristics, they depend on the value of the function. And we still have du by dt equals zero along dx by dt equal u. And we typically express the Burger's equation in implicit form, the solution as u zero, as u equal u zero, x minus ut, but we don't know what u is. So, you know, this is just a, an implicit expression. Um, so, but what happens here? How can we interpret this? Well, if you take a, we're just gonna look at the characteristics. If you take an initial condition that looks like this, this is positive and this is negative. We said that the characteristics are gonna be dependent on the value of the function. So this point is gonna move in this direction and that point is gonna move in the opposite direction because it's negative, okay? So, so what happens? Yep, you're gonna, you're gonna mush the function to each other and develop what? A shock. And that's how shock waves are created, okay? So the Navier-Stokes equations will develop shocks. In the absence of diffusion, they're gonna, they're gonna develop shocks, okay? That's pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let me show you an animation of the Burger's equation um, with diffusion, though. See how it's developing a shock? Now this is diffusion, kinda causing it not to, to blow up, okay? See the initial condition? And then it's developing a shock. Initial, initial condition, and then it starts developing a shock. Okay, that's the Burger's equation with the diffusion shock. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you to the classification of PDEs, the infamous classification into hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic from the perspective of characteristics. Turns out that the method of characteristics is a method to solve general partial differential equations. Okay, the challenge is just trying to find a relation between the independent variables, x and y, or t and x and y and z, et cetera. And we're just gonna do it for 2D for simplicity, okay? And I'm gonna show, this is, this is a standard form that is used for classification of PDEs, okay? And this works for quasi-linear partial differential equations, okay? So the coefficients of the highest derivative can only contain terms up to the highest derivative minus one, okay? So because all of these are second order, the coefficients can only contain terms up to the first order derivative. So you see here, A is function x, y, u, ux, and uy, et cetera, okay? Or any combination of derivatives, okay? All right. So the first order of business is to convert this into a system of first order equations, okay? Because we can't apply the characteristics directly to this system we gotta convert it to a system of first order equations. Because this is a second order um, PDE, um, we're gonna be able to convert, and we have um, um, two variables, two dependent variables, we can convert this into um, a system of two first order ODEs. So if we define V as du by dx and W as du by dy, then by simple substitution, this first equation turns into A dv dx plus B dv dy plus C dw dy equal D. Agree? So du dy is w and du dx is v. So the first one becomes dv dx. The second one, you take the du dx that becomes a v and then take its derivative with respect to y. And the third term, du dy is w 
and then another y derivative that gives you dw dy. But we still need one more equation. And we get that from the equality of cross derivatives. We know that d2u by dx dy is equal d2u by dy dx. And well, actually, that's a desirable property. And that gives us the second equation, dw dx minus dv dy equals 0. So now we have, instead of having one first order equation, we have two first order equations. And we're going to try to apply the characteristics, um, the method of characteristics to, um, to this system. So the question is, are there any lines in the plane y function of x or x function of y, or in other words, dy dx or dx dy, are there any lines described by an equation dx dy by dy or dy by dx on which the PDEs, the, P, the governing, the two PDEs become ODEs? Well, yeah, we can construct that. That's what we're going to look for. Okay, so the first order of business now is to create total differentials like we did with uh, du by dt from the observer, now we have two total differentials, dv and dw, right? Because we have two unknowns, two dependent variables, right? So we have v. For v, the total derivative is dv. That's dv dx dx plus dv dy dy, okay? And for w, the second total derivative is dw, dw dx dx plus dw dy dy. Okay, and then we're going to try to compare these two equations to the other two equations. But how do we do this? Right? How can you, do you compare the first one to the first one or the first one to the second? Let's take a linear combination of the two. Okay? Let's take a linear combination and compare. So we're going to take in, in L1 some function L1. This is, can be a general function L1 times the first equation plus L2 times the second equation, okay? So we're just linearly combining the two equations. So L1 times the first equation equal L1 d over a. And note here I divided by a, okay, for simplicity. So L1 dv dx plus b over a dv dy plus c over a dw dy, that's the first equation, plus L2 um, combination with the second equation. So instead, what I'm doing here is there's no, there's, a large number of ways to, to compare these two total derivatives with the two equations, okay? It's not clear how you compare them. But if you combine them, and they both need to satisfy both equations. So let's just combine them together, okay? Let's just combine them together and compare the, compare, uh, compare the combined equations. Okay, so we're going to multiply the first one by L1 and the second one by L2. And same thing for um, the other two equations, okay? So... For these two guys, okay, I'm going to do L1 dv dx plus L2 dw dx. Why? Because I'm looking for dy dx. Or you can do it in terms of dx dy. It doesn't matter. Okay? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an equation for lines in the plane on which these two equations are equal. Right? So I'm claiming that this equation is the equivalent of du dt in the, one in, the, in the previous case, okay? That's what I'm claiming, okay? So that's essentially our total derivative. And we want to make this one equal to that one, okay? So now the next step is just a matter of comparing the two, okay? So we take these two and we compare. dv dx and dv dx, they're already comparable, right? Um, the, these two guys, they're already equal, and what we're left, and these two guys are equal, what we're left is with the green, box, the green boxes, L1 B over A dv dy plus L2 uh, minus L2 dv dy, it needs to be equal to L1 um, dv dy dy dx, okay? That's the first equation. And the second one is the yellows. L1 C over A needs to be equal to L2 dw, dy dx, okay? So we're just comparing the two. So, so in other words, if an observer was moving along lines dictated by dy dx randomly, you know, they're going to see something. But they will only see the, they will see the correct PDE if and only if dy dx satisfies certain conditions so that these two are equal, okay? So now, we're remember, we're looking for dy dx. And if I call dy dx alpha, then I can simply, these two equations will be equal if L1 B over A 
minus L2, right, is equal to L1 alpha dy dx, right? That's the first equation. And the second one <laughs> comes from dw dy. L1 c over a needs to be equal to L2 times alpha dy dx, okay? Take a second to absorb that. Concerns? Mokbel? Clear? Okay? This is simple equality. We're just saying that, think of this as the total derivative from an observer. What are they seeing for V and W? They will see the correct V and W if and only if dy dx, which I call alpha, satisfies these two equations. And if we satisfy these two equations, then we're going to get the characteristics. So in other words, if the observer moves on curves dy dx that are the solution of these guys, then, that then the PDE, the governing PDE, the first one, is going to be an ODE, is going to be a constant along those, or it's going to be an ODE along those lines, okay? So how we do this, how do we do this? Characteristic lines exist if and only if these two equations, uh, is, if alpha is a solution to these two equations, or in other words, you write it in matrix form. B, B over A minus alpha, L1 minus L2 is equal to zero, and then C over A, L1 minus alpha L2 equal to zero. Now what does this remind you of? This is an eigenvalue problem. If A is a coefficient matrix and alpha is an eigenvalue, then this is nothing more than A minus alpha I equal to zero. And what is A is just simply a coefficient of the coefficients of the two governing equations. I'll show you this in a second. And a non-trivial solution exists if and only if the determinant of A minus alpha I is equal to zero. And in other words, that gives you, gives you the equation for the characteristics. And now you see the infamous b squared minus 4ac, okay? So alpha is dy by dx is given by one, the characteristics are given by 1 over 2a. A is the coefficient in the original equation, and b and c are coefficients in the original equation, okay? So now we have three solutions. If b squared minus 4ac is positive, then you're going to get two real characteristics where this comes from. And that's why you get a hyperbolic equation. It's the wave equation. You're going to get characteristics. We'll, we'll discuss the wave equation later, but the, 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 the hyperbolic equation has characteristics or sound waves that propagate in all directions, essentially. Okay? So in this case, you have two real characteristics, and they're going to propagate in, um, um, in the op in, it's like two advection equations. Okay? If b squared minus 4ac is zero, then you're going to get one real characteristic, and that gives you parabolic equations, or diffusion equations, or the heat, uh, transient diffusion, or the heat equation, transient heat equation. Okay, information is going to propagate kind of in one line at a time, which is going to move parabolic. Okay, and finally, what happens when b squared minus 4ac is negative? you're going to get two imaginary characteristics. They don't exist in the plane, in the real plane. They exist in the imaginary plane. And that's what's so unique about elliptic equations. I don't have a good way to explain it, but if you think it's like you're going to another dimension and making everything equal instantaneously. That's what happens with elliptic equations. There's no directional propagation. With, <coughs> with hyperbolic equations or parabolic equations, you know, the characteristic, you're moving along the characteristic. Okay, there's a domain of, of dependence and a domain of influence. You know, your initial condition is going gonna, is gonna to dictate what your future is. And then the next future is going to depend from what happened previously. But with elliptic equations, it's like no characteristics exist in the real plane. There's no curves you can move along where the PDE is in ODE. But what happens, those curves exist in the imaginary plane, but in a way it's like, the observer has to go to another dimension to see the solution, and that solution is like instantaneous equilibration, okay? That's what happens with an elliptic problem. Okay, now to show you that this is actually an eigenvalue problem, or to just get to the eigenvalue problem 
directly from a set of governing equations, if you take these two equations okay, and write them in, um, matrix, uh, in matrix form, then you put dv dx and dw dx plus a coefficient matrix, which is b over a, remember we divided by a over here, b over a dv dy plus c over a dw dy equals d over a, that gives you the first equation, and the second equation is simply um, dw dx minus dv dy is equal to zero, okay? So you can write the set, the two, e two equations that are the equivalent of the um, first, the governing equation for second order, pardon me, you can write it in matrix vector form, okay? Now, compare this to the, what we did for the characteristics, the governing equations for the characteristics are simply A transpose, remember A contains the coefficients in the governing equation, is simply A transpose minus alpha I, and alpha are the characteristics. So now, all you have to do to get the characteristics is just take the governing equation, get the coefficients into a matrix, A transpose minus alpha I, or lambda I, so now that tells you the characteristics are actually the eigenvalues, or the eigenvalues tell you about the characteristics of the governing equation. Uh, equation. And for those of you who've worked with compressible flows or have listened to people blab about compressible flows, talking eigenvalues, and the eigenvalues are going at the speed of sound, etc., this is it's nothing more than this. It's just telling you that the characteristic values are equal to the speed of sound. The characteristics move at the speed of sound. That's it. Okay, we'll, we'll show you this. Okay. So let's look at a couple of examples. <coughs> um, a wave equation, the wave equation, d2 phi by dt squared minus c squared d2 phi by dx squared equals zero. Um, compare this to the canonical form, then if x is t and um, y is x, okay? So a is equal to one, b is equal to zero, we don't have cross derivatives, and c equal minus c squared. So you plug this into the formula for classification of PDs that gives that tells you this is a hyperbolic system of a hyperbolic equation. You have two characteristics propagating in um, two different directions, and we'll we'll derive what those characteristics are in a second. The diffusion equation, transient diffusion, transient heat equation. Again, you plug it into this form, and that gives you b squared minus 4ac equal to zero. So that gives you one characteristic, and that characteristic is essentially just moves in time but it's instantaneous equilibration for a given time instant. So it's just moving in time. And then finally, for the elliptic um, problem, um, compare the Poisson equation to the canonical form, then A equal to one, B equals zero, C equal to one, so you get B squared, B is zero, minus four, which is less than zero, and that gives you an elliptic equation, okay? You've, you've seen this before, I'm pretty sure, in your PDE class, and now you understand why. Okay, now you relate that to the characteristics. And again, characteristics, what are characteristics? No, physical interpretation. No, they are the curves on which the PDE turns into an ODE. That's how you should think about it. Okay, and the characteristics are given by curves. We, we were just lucky that we, the, with the constant speed advection equation, the characteristics were fixed and constant. But for the Burgers equation or for a non-trivial propagation speed, you see the characteristics, they look like weird, they can be weird curves, okay? And they ca can cause all sorts of interesting behavior, okay? Okay, so now let's look at the wave equation. And again, these slides are rough, so there's already we caught a typo and um, s s they'll get better next year, okay? So the wave equation is actually embedded in the Navier-Stokes equations. If you look at the fully compressible Navier-Stokes equations, you do a linearization process to get the acoustic, um, the propagation of acoustic waves, you're gonna get a wave equation, okay? Second derivative in time and second derivative in space. Um, right now, we don't have time to do this. Maybe by the end of the course, I can show you that derivation, but we're gonna do the opposite now. We're gonna take the wave equation and show that it's actually equal to two advection equations, okay? One, move, one moving in each direct, in a different direction, each one moving in a different direction. Okay, so no animations on these slides because those were like the last 10 minutes before I, I came here, those were put together, okay? So the first order of business is I'm gonna take the wave equation and I wanna convert it 
into, uh, I want to get the characteristics for the wave equation, okay? So let's first convert it to a system of first order PDEs. We define mu equal dt dt and v equal dt dx. You substitute, you get du by dt minus c squared dv dx, agree? And dv dt minus du dx equal to zero, right? And this comes from the equality of cross derivatives. du d, d c dt dx equal d c dx dt, okay? So you get that, um, uh, those cross derivatives, okay? Now, let's look at this in matrix form, like we just um, um, did earlier. These are the coefficients coefficient matrix for this system of equations. So we can get the characteristics directly by finding the determinant of the eigenvalue problem set by the A transpose. So in other words, the deter determinant of A transpose minus alpha I equals zero, that is gonna give us the characteristics. And if you do the simple determinant for this case, you get alpha squared minus C squared equals zero. In other words, alpha or D, dx by dt Remember, alpha is dx by dt in this case, is plus or minus c. So you actually have two, at every point, you have two characteristics. One going um, slope one over c, if you plot on tx, one of them is going one over c and the other one is minus one over c. So they're going in opposite. So every point is gonna propagate in two directions. It's gonna split and propagate in two directions, okay? Alternatively, you can get alpha from the, um, um, the sol this, this solution, okay? But the point is that alpha, remember, is dx by dt or dy by dx, whatever you want to call it, okay? So now we get two characteristic lines, dx by dt equals c, and we're going to start from the top. Don't look at the bottom. Let's follow with me. We get two characteristics. dx by dt is c, and dx by dt is minus c. So any point x0 is going to propagate in two directions, okay? Determined by 1 over c, slope one over C, minus one over C. Now, we're interested in finding the total solution. Okay, so these are just, these are the characteristic curves along which the PDE becomes an ODE. But what's that ODE? We wanna solve for that ODE, like we did with the 1D wave equation. So this is gonna get interesting. If you remember your um, linear algebra, which you should, um, once you get the eigenvalues, your solution is obtained from the eigenvectors. So you gotta find the eigenvectors. And the eigenvectors are simply given by this. Um, a minus eight transpose or a minus lambda i times the values of the eigenvectors l1 and l2 equal to zero. Okay, so now for we're going to set l1 equal to one because you can get an infinite number of solutions. You just set one of the values and then you pick up the slack in the in the second value. So if alpha equal to c for the first characteristic, that gives you l2 equal minus c. Okay. And for alpha equal minus c, it gives you L2 equal c. So we, we keep swapping the signs for these, um, for these values, okay? So now, what is the next step? Remember, we took the total derivative and added it together. And we took the two total derivatives for um, D, uh, when we converted the second order system into two first order systems, we said we can't compare the two equations to the two equations, we gotta compare a combination of the two. And that combination actually has to do with these with the, with the eigenvectors, L1 and L2. So we're gonna take L1 times the first equation plus L2 times the second equation. Remember, this is du and this is dv, total derivative. So L1 du plus L2 dv is equal to zero. That makes the observer moving at these characteristics makes, it, makes him or her see the correct um, equation, okay? So then for, um, for L1 equal one and L2 equal minus C, you get this first equation, okay? Now, what does this mean? This tells us, this is actually what? This is du by dt, total derivative, minus C, and this is what? dv by dt, total derivative. Remember, dv is equal dv dt dt, partial v partial t dt, plus partial v partial x dx, right? Partial, um, yeah, partial u, partial x, dx. So this is actually, sorry, so this is du by dt and this is dv by pi dt. So we get du by dt minus c dv by dt equal to zero on dx by dt equals c. So if you remember the one d, the one way advection equation, we only had du by dt equals zero on dx by dt equals c. 
But for the two-way wave equation, we have two terms at the initial condition because we split the second order equation into two first order equations. So at the, at the point x0 or, or along the characteristic, we're not going to have only one ODE, um, um, one ODE for the PDE. We're going to have actually just a combination of, the, of two ODEs. Okay? You're confused. Pardon me? With, with this step to that step. <coughs> okay, so um, what is this step? Yeah, so let me show you. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah. Actually, I'm, I'm now confused. <laughs> okay, so let's go back a notch. So, just like we did with the general equation, we're going to say du. We're going to say du is equal partial u by partial t dt plus partial u by partial x dx. So that du by dt is equal partial u by partial t plus dx dt. Okay du dx, correct? And then dv is equal dv, d, well, dv by dt is equal partial v by partial t plus, um, yes, plus dx by dt times dv dx. Is this correct? Yes, because both u and v are just functions of x and t, okay? So that, if you go here, du by d, d, partial u by partial t plus minus c squared partial v by partial x for, we're picking now, now we are picking dx by dt equal to c, okay? So I'm gonna replace dx by dt with c. Right, that's the, okay. So what I'm claiming is that the partial u by partial t plus c squared dv dx, oh, sorry, sorry, yes. Du, du dt minus plus c du dx, that gives you du dt, okay? And then minus c, dv dt minus c d plus c minus c dv dx is going to give you dv dt. Okay? Okay. That was <laughs> so you're, you're not the only ones who, who can get, uh, but you just got to master yourself, right? And write things very slowly as you think about it in your mind. Okay. Okay, so we're, we're, ba we're back to this. Okay, this, yes, this makes sense now. But if you compare this to the um, first order PDE, we just had a single condition on the x by dt equals c. Over here, we just have two conditions or a combination of conditions. So that tells us the u by dt minus c dv dt equals zero on this characteristic. And the same, we do the same procedure on the second characteristic, and that gives you du by dt plus c dv dt on dx by dt minus c. So again, I am after u and v, or in other words, just phi. I am after phi, okay? In the end, I, that's what I'm after, the original solution, okay? So we're gonna take this one more step, okay? So we did, we, we, we did all of this um, just earlier, right? We did these guys. Now, for a constant c, we didn't say anything about c. C could have been x squared or u or whatever. But for a constant value of c, then we can combine all of these into a single term, u minus cv. If I call u minus cv as r, r1, which is a function called r1, then this condition implies dr1 by dt equals 0 
on dx by dt equals c. And if I combine these two guys, u plus cv, and, and call them r2, then the second condition is dr2 by dt equals 0 on dx by dt equal minus c. Okay? And then finally, now, now what is r1? Is u minus cv, but what is u is d phi dt, and then v is d phi by dx. Okay? So then we have the total solution. Phi is simply equal. So if you integrate this like we did, like we did before, um, if you think of this as d phi by dt, really, then the total solution phi is r1 at x minus ct plus r2 at x plus ct. And what are r1 and r2? They are these values at the initial, con the initial condition, essentially, on this value. Not on phi, but rather on the wave, um, the first, the one-way wave equation at t equals 0. So that gives you two solutions propagating in different directions. Okay? We have about 15 minutes. And that ends this lecture. Okay, now why is this important? Because it turns out that actually many hyperbolic schemes, they, will, they are inspired by the understanding of characteristics. So this is why upwind works, because the characteristic, you, you, the characteristic, pardon me, they look like 1 over C, the slope, and Point n plus 1 is only impacted by point n minus 1. So that's why the upwind works. You're only picking information from the previous time, okay? You don't have any, because information is propagating in one direction along the characteristic. And so an understanding of what the characteristics look like can inspire a numerical method. That's why parabolic equations that's why implicit, implicit um, um, methods are applied on parabolic equations because they have one characteristic, and that, and that one characteristic just moves lockstep in time. Everything is equilibrated at that one time step, but nothing in the future. So you have to move in lockstep, but at that one step, you want to couple everything together. Okay, you want to couple all the terms together, and that's why implicit methods work well for uh, that's why we use implicit um, discretization for diffusion, and we keep explicit di discretization for advection. You'll see this in the literature. You'll see a combination that they treat advection terms explicitly and diffusion terms implicitly. One way to do it, you do you integrate the advection terms first, and then you solve an implicit system for the diffusion terms, or you treat the diffusion terms implicitly at n plus 1 and keep the advection terms explicit. Okay.